Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve last stone weight, lead code number 1046. So we're given an array of integers called stones, where each stones at i is the weight of the ith stone. So it's just a bunch of stone weights, and we're playing a game with the stones. So each turn, we are going to choose the two heaviest stones, and we're going to smash them together. So suppose that the heaviest two stones have weights x and y, and we're saying that y is the bigger one, or they might be equal. So the result of the smash is going to be if they are equal to each other well then just both of them are completely destroyed but if they are not equal to each other then y is the bigger one the stone of weight x is completely destroyed and the stone of weight y is going to have the height of y minus x so since y is bigger we're going to have a new stone that's the difference between the weights so at the end of the game there is at most one stone left so you could end with one stone or you could actually end with zero stones it depends what happens at the end. And you just need to return the weight of the last remaining stone. And if there aren't any stones left, you would just return zero. So if we have two, seven, four, one, eight, one, notice that it's not sorted. So we take the two biggest stones, which are seven and eight, and we smack them together. And the bigger one is eight. So we'd get left with the difference, which is one. So basically we would remove eight and seven from the array, but we'd put a one in there. So now it's two, four, one, one, one. The two biggest stones from here are two, two and four. And so when we smack them together, we're going to get a two. So now we have two, one, one, one. The two biggest stones are a two and any of the ones. So we're going to be left with a one. So we'll have just one, one, one. And then from here, you would take two of the ones, crush those together. And then you're going to be left with precisely a one. So what you'd want to return is the weight of that final stone, which is one. So really what we're doing here, so if there's n elements here, well, to get the maximum, that's going to take big O of n time, you'd have to look through the array every single time. And every step of the game, say you had seven and eight here, well, that's going to lose one stone because we'd be left with just a one. And sometimes if you have, you know, two ones together, well, that's going to bang together and you're going to lose two. So if you're losing either one or two stones every single step, you're basically doing in n times this max calculation. So n times you're going to have to get the max and you'll actually need to have to get the max twice. So roughly that is going to give you an n squared solution and that doesn't sound too optimal so let's do a little better so basically if you heapify this array uh, it would look in a visualization like this so this would be our heap here so to create this heap it actually doesn't create a binary tree this is just how you'd visualize it it would actually kind of move these array elements in place so it actually takes constant space so it would take o of one space to do that and heapify it turns out it takes o of n time to run that and now how we'd use it is very similar you would just kind of simulate through the heap. And so you would need the top element. Okay, you can get that. So we get the eight. This now has to restructure. And when it restructures, or when you kind of pop an element here, well, it takes log of the heap size to do that. And the heap will have roughly n things. So when you pop, it's going to take log n time to do that. So we get the biggest, which is going to be eight. This has to restructure a little bit. It grabs the seven. This two is going to get promoted up here. And then we would also have to get the seven. So we get these two and this is going to promote the four up and it would look like this again that's going to take log time okay so we smack them together since one is bigger than the other we would kind of get a one from that and then we would just need to put that back into the heap because this is one of our stones and so when you put this or push this into the heap if you push this into the heap it's going to work its way in here and pushing is also going to take big o of log of the heap size to do that so it'll take log n time to kind of push that element down into where it needs to go. And then we just kind of keep this simulation up. You would get the four that's going to get promoted up here, maybe something like this. We would then take the two. So we get the two and the four that's going to be promoted, maybe something like this. doesn't really matter because they're all ones here. And we would smack the four and the two together. That would make a two. We would actually end up making the two be the root. So it would have to restructure like this, where this kind of gets demoted down to here. And again, Again, we would get the two and the one together is going to make a one. So this would have to restructure like this, and we'd actually replace it with a one as they smack together. We would take two of the ones, they'd smack together and disappear. And then you can just basically pop one more time here as it's very small at this point, but this is our final element. So what we're doing here is basically n times, we're
we're interacting with the heap. Every time you interact with the heap, you are going to do a log n operation. And so this is going to give you an n log n time complexity. So let's code this one up. Okay, so we're going to make stones in place be a max heap. So to do that, we are going to need to import heap q from Python. So we'll just import the heap q library. And heap q actually assumes we use a minimum heap. What you'd have to do is kind of treat this min heap as a max heap. And so what we're going to do first is for i in the range of the length of the stones, we are going to negate all of them. So we'll set stones at i equal to the negative version of stones at i. So we simply just negate them. Now what this does, we can just picture this as they're all negative signs. They were all positive before, so now they're all negative. Since it is going to use a min heap, well, the smallest value is actually going to be the biggest value. So now when we do heap q dot heapify the stones, it does that in O of n time. That will technically be a min heap, but since they're negated, it basically acts as a max heap. So while the length of the stones is greater than one, we're going to get the largest stone is heap q dot heap pop from the heap, which is the stones. And the next largest is equal to the heap q dot heap pop from the stones again. Now they might be equal to each other. And if they are equal to each other, well, then we've took them off the heap. And if we were to smack them together, it would just disappear. So there'd be nothing to add into the heap. But if the largest is not equal to the next largest, well, then obviously largest is bigger. And you'd want to place onto the heap the stone that is their difference. So we'd heap q dot heap push onto the stones, which is our heap. And we'd put on the largest minus the next largest. Now we know that largest and next largest are actually negated. If you take a big negative value like negative eight, and then you subtract a smaller negative value like negative six, well, that's going to take negative eight and basically add six, and that's going to be negative. So the resulting thing that you're putting on here is definitely going to be negative. And while that's a little bit weird, that is actually what you have to do because we are using this to be a max heap and we negate negated them for a reason. After we get out of here, however, if the length of stones is equal to one, so if there's still a stone left over, you'd want to return the negated. So when you negate that negative value, that makes it positive. So the negated heap q dot heap pop from the heap, which is our stones. And otherwise we could just return zero. Okay, so that's our code. The time complexity of this will be big O of, so basically n times because of the loop, you're going to do log n stuff. So we're going to get n log n time complexity and the space heapify does it in place. And so this is actually going to be a space complexity of big O of one. Okay, so if we are to run this, this is going to work and we can pass our test cases. I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.